right, so Google Wave is a product born right here in the Google Sydney office from the engineers that created Google Maps. It's an early preview right now, so everyone's wondering what it is and how they can use it to make their world a better place. I'm going to share some ideas about how we can use it to make Maps a better place. So to start off with some basics, Google Wave has been called Email 2.0 or what email would look like if it was invented today. It's basically a communication and collaboration tool. When you first look at it, it almost just looks like Gmail but rearranged a little bit. But that first impression is actually pretty deceptive. Google Wave is a lot more than that. So you can create these conversations and then create these nested trees of replies inside these conversations. And those conversations are called waves and the blips inside them are called, well, the messages are called blips. Um, and if you want to create a fork off a thread, you can create a private reply and add whatever this pins. And uh, if you want to edit a blip at any time, even if you're not the creator, you can go and edit that blip. And if you want to look back to see who edited and replied anywhere, you can just play back. So it's revision history is really fun. Now, this doesn't seem that revolutionary, but it actually solves a lot of the problems that email poses, right? You don't have to worry about making really stupid, unretractable typos, or getting CC'd on a thread that's 40 messages long and trying to interpret it, or just trying to figure out who said what when. So yeah, you can call it email 2.0. And just like anyone can set up an SMTP server and send emails across servers, we want anyone or engineers to be able to set up wave servers and share waves across servers. So in order to do that, we need to open source a couple of essential components of the code base. We have the operational transforms, which is what lets us do real-time collaboration across the participants. And then we have the data model, which is the structure of the XML documents that we then perform those transforms on. A little hardcore. <laughs> now, in order to let people create full wave clients, we also need to open source the client server protocol. And we're trying to open source as much as our JavaScript clients as we can so that people across different wave servers could still have a consistent user experience. But now, let's get to the favorite part, the part that has to do with mapping, that's the developer platform. So at Google, we know that making an extensible developer platform is really important, because we've seen the way that developers have used APIs to extend iGoogle and Maps beyond anything possible for, or anything we imagined. It's probably why we have 60 plus APIs today. So for wave, we have the embed API, which lets you embed an interactive wave on your web page. And then we have the Extensions API, which lets you create collaborative robot participants and then collaborative gadgets and add them all to Wave. So you can take this Wave content out, or you can put your own content into Wave. So a gadget is basically a mini web page that has a shared state across all the participants on the Wave, and everyone can modify and retrieve that state. For example, this Map Plus Train gadget simply visualizes the locations that everyone has set on the Wave. Now this other map gadget is more of a freeform map creation gadget and when you're editing it, you can go and add markers and shapes and info windows and then set what the viewport should be. And when you're viewing it, you can read those info windows and pan around and no one can see what you're doing. So privacy and modes is actually pretty important here. Now the Lonely Planet Trip gadget adds a dimension of time, which makes it more useful. So you can create a trip, add the hotels and places of that trip, you can schedule places, and then everyone on the wave can add stuff and also rate and comment, and together you can figure out where you want to go to. Now, the cool thing about these gadgets is that they're just a part of a larger collaborative wave document. So you could use map gadgets with other gadgets, you could discuss a map gadget beneath of it, beneath of it, and you could also play back a map gadget to see how it happened, and, which is really cool with maps because you go pretty markers. Okay, so a robot is basically an event listener on a wave that reacts to stuff like the user typing and then does stuff like adding blips. So a hypothetical place locator robot could look for places in the text, extract those, and then insert a collaborative map gadget that had all those places in there. Uh, now we could add it, you know, dimension of time to that and make it more useful. So could it also look for dates in the text and then if there are past dates, maybe insert a little timeline map to show us how it happened or if there are upcoming dates, maybe it offers to add them to our calendar automatically. Now, a robot can help you out. It can also compete against you. So you can have a robot that inserts a place guessing game and then tries to beat you and your friends. And a robot is better than human friends because a robot can have any level of difficulty, whereas my friends are really good. So <laughs> Google Wave is useful for a wide range of use cases, from casual to serious. So GIS analysts can use it to visualize their business conversations. Pub crawler, well, they can use it to plan their pub crawls. And a history teacher might use it to quiz their students. 
Now, a more compelling use than one just mentioned in the last talk would be disaster mapping, where people, volunteers, when a disaster happens, they could create a way, do collaborative mapping, and actually discuss what's going on beneath there. So I think this could be a really killer use case for it. So yeah, so Wave is new, and it's, it's a baby in the web world, and these are just some of the ideas I have after playing with it for just a few months. And I expect that you guys have a lot of better ideas, and I hope that you'll share them with me.